right, so let's go ahead and read the thing. Oh, I'm sorry. We did have questions, but let's read uh, Will's email. Now, here. this is Will's comment in response to you guys telling him, hey, don't tell us, leave a, don't leave a, I'm not making a comment answer us and tell us what the hell you were saying this is that thing yes, yes. so this is will okay. expressing himself as we asked him to do and he previously warned uh you know about expletives and yeah, whatnot so whether or not we have or bleepery in here so mind you this is from you know like two weeks ago almost all right so he says all right challenge accepted no more holding back Mind you, this is a much shorter email than I thought. All right. Preface. Hmm. I know I'm going to sound like a raving madman without some of the context. I can't really figure out how to type. Okay. Okay. So he's going back to the school shootings and uh, gun debate that we were talking for, okay. for setting up the context of what he's talking about. Is so, this the, the school shooting one that I was talking yes, to you about? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's the last yeah. episode you were on. Yeah. Okay. So school shootings. We have a gun problem in this country. If you're a responsible owner, I have no issue with you. We need to make mental health a criteria for being able to get a firearm. It already is. Uh, people with their, we need God back in schools. Bullshit. Need to stop your thoughts and prayers. Don't do a goddamn thing. When someone's child is killed by a nut job, who should have never had a gun to begin with. Stop fucking blaming video games. If someone already has it in their head to carry out a school shooting, they're going to kill someone regardless. I know that. Uh, but can we stop making it so easy for unhinged motherfuckers to get a gun? It's actually not that easy, but, you know. Well, when the fuck is enough enough? How many kids have to die before people who can change this shit stop pointing fingers and do something? Well, the problem is it's not the people who can do something pointing the fingers it's politicians pointing fingers the people who can do something is the parents at home yeah so here here's the thing uh the people who yell do something much like a current person who's trying to become governor in our state who never needs to be in control of anything mm -hmm. um do something is all certain politicians will say they will never actually do anything now here's here's yeah. a rant. So here's a rant. Um, Look at California. Yeah, exactly. So here's here's a. We're rant. gonna bank this rant for what's his face, Jay. <laughs> exactly. So here's here's the here's a very short rant. Politicians who claim that they're going to do something, especially on something as big and important as gun control, school shootings, blah 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 blah, um, they will never actually do anything other than say what they're going to do to get you to vote for them and get them in power. <clears throat> Once they're in power, they will do nothing because then they have no legs to stand on. They have no soapbox. No, and they'll just blame it on the person in front of them. Oh, and I was going to do all that stuff, but the, you but know, they, if they're they, Republican, they, they'll be like the Democrat in front of me ruined it. If they're Democrat, they'll be like the Republican that was in front of me ruined yep, it. Like they always just blame right. the guy before who can't exactly. defend themselves. And, and, and you they know what? Never while while they're finger pointing, they got three fingers pointing back at them. Uh, again with that. You sound like a 90 year old grandma when you say that shit, Mike. No, he sounds yeah, like well. a dad. And his father's dad. <laughs> yeah, because I so, am a dad. Hello. So, so. so here's the thing. But it's true. It's like, it's like, you know, all the blame, 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 blame. Well, then why didn't you do something about it? The biggest thing is parents need to be paying attention to their kids. They need yep. to be reading their kids and understanding how their kids are acting mentally, health wise. You know, if you see them in their room all crouched down, quit ignoring them. Quit, quit being too busy with your life to take time to go talk to your kid and find out how they're doing and don't introduce them to stuff that they can't handle like like or introduce it to them young and teach them the proper way to handle stuff we talked about gun control and stuff before i i mess with guns now and i'm i am healthy and 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 fine with them because my uncle started when i was young and he started from the basis on up and worked me through all the proper uh safe correct ways to handle a gun and you learn you learn that and you repeat it and you do it repeatedly and do it repeatedly and all of a sudden you you know what you're doing without harming yourself or somebody else by accident and as far as them doing it on purpose that's up to the parent to step in and kind of oh man my kid uh you know he he he's you know looks like he might be heading towards something or talks like he might be heading towards something dark either hurting himself or hurting somebody else maybe i should try to talk to them and if you can't talk to them get them to somebody that will talk to them yeah that's right and know that maybe they're gonna blame you it might be your fault i feel this way i'm angry at the world because my mom or dad did such and such just know that you have to be like 
okay, I own that. My bad. I'm I'm sorry. I dropped the ball on that. Let's try to fix it for this moment forward. Because you can't change the past, <clears throat> but you can't just ignore it because you don't want to take any heat for it. No. Yeah. And, and plus, on top of that, to say, you know what, just thoughts and prayers don't do bullshit. At least there are people that give a damn about a situation to pray for those victims. Th thoughts, and, and, thoughts and prayers help unite people over an issue. It's well, exactly. Not, it's not, look at, at 9-11. How many people came together after that disaster happened? I mean, the whole and, country. And, well, yeah, exactly, right? Thoughts and prayers. All our thoughts and all our prayers went to He's, helping those families that lost their loved ones, you know, prayed that they would get over such a terrible event that took place that their families would be somehow able to move forward, right? That's what faith is about. I'm not talking about religion, but I'm talking about faith. If, if, if you look back farther, far enough where uh, I don't want to get you know, sounding all religious or anything like that. But you know what? Back in 1962, when prayer was taken out of the school mm. and and things were, you know, became, I suppose you could say, rather unbalanced, let's say, for lack of a better word, things started going a little bit downhill in the school system. It's an interesting correlation. Yeah. Just saying. I, I have a quote I'm, I'll bring up here in a minute, but I wanted to say this first. Um, Will, while I, I like your your thoughts and feelings on this situation, what you have to understand, and this is also for everybody out there, you cannot legislate away a problem, a, a cultural problem, a people problem. You cannot make new laws to get rid of problems. You, you no. really can't. It yeah, because the bad it, guy will always break that law. Yeah. So you cannot pass new laws that will stop bad people from doing things because bad people will always find a way to do the bad thing they want to do regardless mm -hmm. of whatever laws you put up there you cannot do it and i had this discussion with my aunt the other day because she uh posted or i posted a thing and then she commented on it literally almost almost what will said and knowing that she's fairly conservative and and they have guns and stuff like that the fact that she said what she said was really strange and then you know i didn't want to say everybody dogpiled on her but everybody brought logic and reason to it it's like you can't just make new laws you also will never get you will never move forward by giving up any rights no so never. They, they talk about they talk about they talk about repealing uh gun laws or adding more gun laws i said it the wrong way they want they want to add new red flag laws, which if you are familiar with the concept of stop and frisk in New York, mm, red yeah. flag laws are stop and frisk on steroids. That gives yep. any anyone oh, the yeah. ability to violate your rights, your civil rights as a person, without any due process and treat you like a criminal when you've committed no crime. Yep. So before you start jumping on any bandwagons and stuff like that, really look into the solutions that people have said they want to try and see how those solutions will do more damage than harm. Also, if you want to see more uh, low income people, more people in the urban areas get hit harder by crime, institute red flag laws because you're going to yep. start hurting more people on the lower end of the spectrum than on the higher end. That's what the communists and Nazis did. Yep. Essentially. They did in a, in a quite a few different ways for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, but I mean like, and certain politicians will always prey on people's emotions to try to enact new legislation without even bothering to deal with actual laws or I don't know, constitutional violations, which red flag laws are. Now, for anybody who says we need better background checks, we already have really thorough background checks. If you are purchasing a gun legally, you have to go through a background check. Even if you're at a, even if you're at a uh, gun show, we had a gun show in town literally this weekend. Everybody there, mm. if they purchased a gun, whether they walked away with it that day or not, still had to go through a full background check to purchase said weapon. And it's, and it's in the system, and it's a federal system. Now, the one of the solutions that was proposed is to get away, do away with the 72 hour window of um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, approval. 
yeah. or, or denial. So getting rid of the 72 hour window, which basically tells the FBI said, Hey, look, you got three days to run this background check. And if you don't, they get the gun anyways. So that falls out on the FBI. Now, the thing is, if you get rid of that window, that means they can indefinitely just leave you waiting for permission to own something. Yeah. That you already I've always have. been I've never understood why people get so mad about the three day thing. I don't care if it takes six months. There has never been a time in my life. A gun is not like a flat tire. You go out <laughs> and you get a flat tire, you need that fixed immediately. You don't have time to wait for that get around on that. I can wait six months for a gun a background check to come back because you know why I don't need that gun right then. Well most people that are buying guns already own more than one gun. Yeah, yeah, so, I never understood. But, that. but like, here's here's the thing, Ricky. Freaking rush, right? it, it's it's not about if they get it done in six months. It's that they have literally zero reason to ever run it. So the thing is, what I'm is saying like, is, with the, I think with the three, three days day is a rush. I think the yeah. three day creates cr- cracks where people who shouldn't be getting their hands on guns are falling through that crack. <sighs> yes and no, but the thing is that once again, that falls on the FBI. So if the FBI mm. does their background, does their job and runs the background check on this individual within a certain the amount of time given and they right. don't pass. Cool. The idea on the rush is actually to disapprove people, not to approve people. Think about that. It's like you want a three, huh. day, three day max waiting period. It's not a, you have to wait three days. It's three the days. Idea, the idea of three days was, is more to try to cut out the heat of the moment murders. No, I get that. That's, but, but the thing is that's a maximum. That's that. That's not. It takes three days. Is they have three days to respond, and if they don't, you get the gun anyways. See, mm. That's the part that fails. They should never. You, I've never heard of that. Get the gun anyways yeah. if they don't respond in three days. But, but it happens. It happens a wow. lot. But, but the thing wow. is, is like that comes down to whether or not they're doing their job. So yeah. honestly, if you want to fix anything, get more people in there to run background checks. Or like I said, give them more time because again, we have you know let's yeah. say a hundred thousand well, right. FBI agents you know, monitoring 300 million citizens background checks. That's not fast. Yeah. But they're not going through 300 million at a time because children can't buy guns. People mm-hmm. over certain people over age of 18 can buy guns. Anybody under unless purchased by a legal adult for a specific reason, like we've seen yeah. in other cases, you know, but Understood, but what I'm saying state, is it's still an overwhelming number. It is. But the thing is also, if you've already passed those checks, it tends to go faster, just depending. Yeah. So it like, shouldn't be because I might've done something since the last time you did my background check. Yeah. But do you, yeah, but you that understand it? That one, but the it? window, the window is smaller on the second go because now they don't have to go back 30, 38 years. They, they have only have to go back two years. Yeah. They only yeah. have to go back six months to see if you've done anything since. So there's that. Now the only other, and here's the thing, <clears throat> and this is something that a lot of people need to understand. Um, you have an inalienable right to defend yourself by whatever means with whatever weapon, gun, sword, knife, cannon, bazooka, whatever. You have a right to have those things. The government wants the ability to remove that right. And the only way you tend to lose that legally is by due process. Whether you're a criminal, you know, if you have a record whether you have been found mentally incapable by a judge. So you have yeah, to but go. People find workarounds on that though. Yes, like, but I'm, that's where I've it's called known, illegal. <laughs> I've known felons that just put all their guns in their wives' names. Like yeah. all of a sudden their wives yeah. become huge gun. Names. And that's illegal technically. So like th- that's the problem is like, that's not a, wor- that is a workaround, but legally his wife owns that weapon. Now, whether yep, or not, I mean, she's not allowed well, to let him use so, it. So here's the thing. You buy a gun. And your kid goes off and shoots somebody with it. Well, I think that person should be culpable if they but that's, not have that's that thing the properly same. stored. Okay, and and I got no problem with that. If if yeah. the, if there was if there was unrestricted access to that weapon, you know, then that's a thing. Now you can't also lock things away in such a way that you have the you have now rendered your ability to defend yourself, you know useless you uh, know, so, i'm so big on the partial the partial lock. process well i I'm mean like the three-step process i'm i'm not to put the guns in one safe on one side of the house put the bullets in another safe on the other side no. of the house i'm more have a loaded clip outside of the gun nothing loaded in the gun and have a trigger lock yep that's but, three steps because you'd have to put the clip in you'd have to uh, prime it and then you'd have to take the trigger lock off that's three steps yeah that's what and, i'm down for and too. for me for me yeah. 
if I could, I know they're expensive, but have like a thumbprint lock to make things yep. a little faster than trying to fucking fumble with a key or fumble with the thing. But also that means that, uh, you know, like your kids can't just accidentally access the case or, or whatever, or can't access the trigger lock or whatever like yeah. that. So, I mean, there's a lot of ways to avoid that problem. But once again, as we already said, if people want to do something stupid, they're going to find a way to do that stupid thing. If well, it ain't a gun, a it's going to be a car. If it's not a car, it's going to be a knife. If it there's, is a knife, there's always going to be a bat. Yeah. There's, you can no. go on the internet right now and, and with, I think it was like a little piece of like uh, wood and some rubber bands, they teach you how to make your AK 47s fully automatic, even though you can't own it legally. Uh, yeah, like but you fu- fully, fully on. File down, you, fu- you file down a piece of metal, you stick this wedge in there, and you rubber band it into place, and boom, you have a fully automatic gun now. Yeah, but doesn't wow. that basically render it as I pull the trigger once and it empties the mag? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so I it mean, like, much. It, it's a it's a one pull thing, and that's that's but still ridiculous. fully automatic at that point. <laughs> yeah, but you could do that to a Glock. You could do that to yeah. any semi automatic. Well, what I'm weapon. saying is, people could, will go through that to to break the law. They'll go through yeah. easier shit now, to break the law too. Now, any smart gun owner and operator won't do those things because it goes beyond the laws of safety. Yeah. Like even for, for you, you destroy your gun. Now, the thing is, is like, there are probably more respectable law abiding people with guns than there are criminals with guns in theory. Now right. those criminals might have more guns, but most of them are probably not trained on anything. They haven't spent any time on the range. They haven't learned anything about safety, aiming proper use of guns. You know, you talked about the guys holding the gun sideways, you know, to look cool, that kind of shit. And it, it I'm never going to be an advocate for taking away someone's rightful things. their lawful things because someone else has committed a crime. So, no, I mean, exactly. you can, like I said, you can't legislate away a cultural problem. It's like, this no. is, there is a cultural issue when it comes to these things. And yeah, the mentally ill thing. Okay. So if someone is mentally ill, then if you know that person is going to be a problem, if they're going to have an issue and you haven't reported it to any authorities who could by due process, remove their ability to buy guns, say even this kid, you know, he was what you've just turned 18, right? So he purchased the guns. They were delivered to him after he was 18. He passed a background check legally because he had never done anything wrong. But like we said, if his parents or his grandma or whoever it was who was in charge of his life had recognized these issues, reported them, and he had gone through the actual due process of, you know, checking him out, seeing like, okay, maybe he's got some psychop- psychopathy issues, things like that, you know, then they could legally take away his ability to buy guns, you know, legally, which, yeah. yeah, that's, that's, it's a minor roadblock for some people, but for some people, it's literally the dead end. But also in the same way, had he not gotten those AR style guns, he still stole a handgun from someone. Now, if you really that's want to right. talk about the entire situation, then we still got to talk about the Uvalde police and everything that's gone down around that and how shady and crazy all of that looks. And the more that has come out about it, it looks fishier and fishier the more they talk. So they even they even stopped responding to the Texas state troopers who were investigating them. I mean, that mm-hmm. only that only looks weird when you stop cooperating with the body that's investigating your handling of a situation you know that's extremely so there's there's a there's a lot of politics going into that entire mess so either way um we'll get off that i'll probably i might actually put that in as a rant we'll just we'll put will's whole (laughs) whole thing in as a rant Um, i don't think that was really a rant that was just a good conversation that was a good conversation and and i do apologize that it took so long for us to get to it like i said you know we're running a week behind you know of course and we had uh we had Beansy on last time, which oh oh by the way, shout out shout out to Matt because uh, uh, he had some serious issues last week where he ended up in the hospital, so he, he's at home recovering after that. He said, uh, he was just faking it because he wanted me to get on the internet, tell him I love him, and I hope he felt better. Mm. He wanted the world to know I loved him. Yeah, I guess that's what <laughs> happened. So well, yeah, I hope he feel better. So yeah, shout out to him. Last time he said he still he was still in some pain, but he's doing a lot better and he's at home. So. We love good. you, Beansy. We we know you're gonna kick its ass, man. Yeah, and he needs to come back on. So I, there's an open invitation to to Matt. Uh, I told him.
I see her rolling up, Uber black Cadillac, high heel boots, and a sexy body full of tats.